The views expressed and opinions given by the individual hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Ztalk Radio, its affiliates, or sponsors. Hey, hello and welcome to Canadian X Talk Radio. It's Saturday night, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. on the East Coast. I'm your host, Glenn Ferguson, joined as always by my wife, Janessa. Hi. Good evening, everybody. So our special guest tonight is uh, Mike Zorn of uh, That's Entertaining Promotions in Vancouver. How are you doing tonight, Mike? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Wake him up! Wake him up! Shock system! Okay, I'm awake. Sorry, what are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> Good. So you organize a lot of events in Vancouver that are based on a, a kind of a, a dry feel, a sober events. Yes, um, I do, and I'm also now getting into other styles of events. Um, we're going to be doing our first one that's not sober on uh, November 22nd at uh, Club 6. It's Hip Hop for All-Star Youth Sports. How did you get involved with that? How did I get involved with that? Well, it started out, I wanted to do something, I wanted to break away from sober events. Yeah. Um, because I've been doing them for about 10 years. And um, Corey Philpot at uh, Club Six had been so good to me. We'd thrown a lot of uh, sober events in there. It was really cool that maybe that we would throw our first event there. Yeah. Give back to him and uh, his organization that helps uh, youth be able to play sports that are... Um, What's the words I'm looking for? Disadvantaged. That would be a good. That would be good. That can't afford to. That yeah. can't afford registration. So. Well, I, and you know, I understand where he's coming from because my daughter was in competitive swimming for seven years. It cost us thousands of dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Thousands. You know, especially as she progressed through and got better and better. You know, it wasn't too bad at the beginning. Yeah. And I think it was what about five or six thousand dollars by yeah, the time that. finished. For those who don't know uh, Corey Philpott, he was a BC Lions linebacker in uh, '95. Running back, running, running back, back, running back. There we go. <laughs> I knew I missed something at least once. Did, was today. he? Did he? Was he part of the Grey Cup? He was part he of was the Grey Cup in '95, '94. Yeah, '94. I, I just see. I we watched the Grey Cup, and four days later, I wasn't allowed to. I was I was due on the Grey Cup and I wasn't allowed to <laughs> scream and yell because they weren't excited. I don't want to miss the game. Until, <laughs> until the game was over. You can go to the label when the game's over, but not until, right? <laughs> not until. <laughs> Wasn't he known as a uh, Quick Six way yeah. back in uh, '94? Yeah. He, you know, he well, six he was there the with uh, Darren Flutie. Yeah, Flutie. yeah. yeah. Um, Louis, Louis, the Saglia. Yeah. 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 So one of our better teams. <laughs> yeah, it was, was. They're not doing too good this year. Well, they lost Travis Lule, who I, I've heard is just. I, I've heard through the grapevine, um, through. I have a couple people that I pick up that are that know him, and he's just a very, very nice man. Yeah, I hope he's back soon. Yeah, he's just. He's one of those old time quarterbacks that loves his O line, that treats his O line mm-hmm. well, and treats everybody well. Just a classy guy. Yeah. So, uh, what kind of a fool would be on radio, uh, or organizing <laughs> events in Vancouver, other than me and you and uh, my wife here? <laughs> how did you get involved with that in the beginning? How did I get involved? Well, how I got involved with events was, I um, I sobered up in 2004, and um, I I always kind of wanted to throw events, and then it just sort of happened that I started going to these sober events. And I was like, hey, you know what? I really want to get involved in those. I really want to, that's, I could, I could see myself doing that. And then sort of d- down the road, I ended up a chair of a committee and chair of another committee and chair of another committee and yet another committee. And then it was just 
You know, we started, we went from throwing sober events in halls to throwing sober events in nightclubs and cleaning all the booze out of nightclubs and I wanted to sort of um, expand on what I was doing. So who's going to be at this event that's coming up? Um, we've got Onyx from New York, we've got Snack the Ripper, Mercules and Jacqueline G from the um, from Surrey, we've got Lucid Afterlife from Vancouver, um, we've also got um, Juvie Dizzle from uh, Surrey and KV from Vancouver. Um, who else do we have? We have B. Mendez, Giuliano, Jacket Diamonds, they're from Vancouver. Wow, big event. Uh, yeah, big and event, it came, yeah. yeah, basically the, um, the doors open at 7. The first uh, performer is going to go on at um, about 7.15. Um, the main acts will go on, probably start... 10:30 somewhere in there, um, with Onyx headlining at about 12:30, and they'll be on for approximately an hour. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a. What date is this? Just Nove so people. November 22nd. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, get that out of the way. It's, it's, it's at Club. It's at Club Six at 11920 70th Avenue Delta. Oh, I know Which what that is. is. That used to be Cheers. That yeah, used to be Cheers, cheers Nightclub. Right across from the Save On Foods. Yes, it's it's called Club Six now, after mm -hmm. Corey Philpott. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew he owned that hotel because he was, um, the corporation of Delta was giving him the wherewithal, mm -hmm. um, I think it was a year or two ago, about he was holding a program to help people try and sober up and yes, get back on yes uh, he's actually the he's actually the general manager um and um he they had vision quest in there vision yes. quest yes and um the mayor of delta sort of didn't like that idea not in her <laughs> not in her city no yeah. oh you can move it across the road on uh, scott road there <laughs> in the surrey no problem whatsoever yeah. it's not doing that yeah just ain't happening in delta it ain't, it ain't happening. No, it's not well, happening. Yeah, the, but the the uh, thing that I get about F Corey Philpot, and and I think you'll agree with me, he likes to give back. Absolutely, he does. Absolutely, he has adopted this city, and I, because he he's American. Mm hmm. And I don't think he's ever left since. Uh, no, I think he went back for a bit. No, he went to. Well, maybe yeah. He maybe he did go back for a bit. He mm -hmm. went back and played in Winnipeg for a little while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But then I remember being in the All Star. I remember being in All Stars Bar and Grill, which is the pub next door to to Club Six in the same building. Yeah. And I remember talking to him. He was managing or running the bar, or something to do with the bar. Probably in two thousand and two. Like he's been there for. Uh, but he he fell in love with the city. Yeah, he did. He didn't leave after he retired from football. No, no, he came back I, here. I know he left in the sense that I know he played for another team because yeah. he got traded or whatever, but came back to the city. I think he's he got married and yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know. You know, you because it's part of the team, and if we were really into it at that time, yeah, um, we big watched time. big time. Mm-hmm. And then life takes over sometimes. Uh, but I've, I've always been a CFL fan. Have you? Big yeah. time. I, I, Both I, of us. I, I was sitting in the end zone when that little goal was kicked. Oh, but nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, see, when we would be in Edmonton and the CFL, you know, the Grey Cup would be on. Mm -hmm. And it's colder than snot out there. Yep. And we would have um, flag football in the snow in the middle of winter in Edmonton and then come back in and have hot toddies, you know. Yeah. No one won. <laughs> <laughs> Did it matter? Did no. <laughs> then we would come in, have hot toddies and watch the football game. Perfect. <laughs> well, then, you know, that was my couple years in Edmonton, right? So this one on the 22nd, is that a dry or is that... Uh, that will not be a dry event. That's a 19, a 19 plus event. Okay. Um, we will be doing hopefully some s another sober event in in the new year sometime. Hopefully, it's maybe around Valentine's Day. There's nothing been sort of planned out yet. Yeah. Uh, well, I know Philip um, Cartel Cartel yeah. had asked us to come, but the event the uh, venue was not large enough. But he had asked us to come and, and broadcast live. I think well, that was the uh, Nightmare Nightmare on Broadway. Yeah, I think something. Yeah, and it was just event. it was just such a small venue and. 
anybody putting us in there with even with our little table would have been yeah. a little challenging. That was a, that was a really I was there. That was a really cool event. It was. Yeah, we were kind of. Glenn was going. Oh, Those are cool. real of Vancouver. Sure. Yeah, that'd, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it was. It was a really. It was really exciting. It was really. It was different from um, anything that I've been to for sober events, and it was really. It was really a cool. It was really a cool experience. So, where are you envisioning yourself to go now that this is going to be obviously your first event? Mm-hmm. And again, like you say, you're you're supporting Corey and his his uh, foundation. Yep. Uh, where do you figure that you will head from here? Besides so, doing some more sober events, because that's dear to your heart. Yep. Yep. What my goal is is um, in, in, over the course of time, we're going to do concerts that will be not sober concerts. We're going to do sober events. Um, I hope to work with Philippe a whole lot on those sober events. Um, and uh, from there, I mean, we're going to get into doing some fundraising for people. Um, we want to get into doing private events, corporate events, those sorts of things over the course of time. Right now, we're sort of concentrated on concerts and sober events. and. That's that's another aspect that we'll that we have to sort well, of. Well, yeah, like uh, you know, as we were discussing earlier, the one of the reasons why I'm so interested in is because we're putting on this convention, mm-hmm. which in some ways feels like it's over my head. Sometimes I've learned a lot, and I'm learning more every day about what I've got to do to promote it, and uh, you know, because we're bringing in. I think we've decided on the stars that we're bringing yeah, in. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, well, obviously, he was talking about Ben. Yeah. Um, I think ben Hansen. Ben yeah. Hansen I th- from Factor Faked. And we're g- I think we're going to bring in Paul Bradford from Ghost yeah. Hunters International and Ghost Hunters. I think you've heard that name, haven't mm-hmm. you? Yeah. Really n- nice man. Yeah. Nice man. And what we found with in the paranormal industry is that there there's a lot of really nice people. We've met a lot of really nice people that are these reality TV stars. And they're wonderful. Mm-hmm. Just really down to earth like you and I just sitting there talking. Well, that's pretty much what we do at conventions anyway. Most, <laughs> most of the time, just sit around talking. Yeah. <coughs> it's kind of nice because it, I've hit Winnipeg twice in the last two years as a guest speaker. Yeah. So you, you get to know these people personally, and it's like, you know, you see them on TV, and you think, well, oh, that's cool. It's like Paul Bradford from Ghost Hunters International. Yeah. But when you're actually sitting down, it's like, uh, can you pass the sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I need coffee. (laughs) It's 9 o'clock in the morning, and we were up doing an investigation until 2.30 in the morning, and it's 9 o'clock, right? And, you you know, the bags are under, I need coffee. Yeah. (laughs) Say when I met John Zappas in Kentucky, you know, we spent a lot of time sitting outside drinking coffee all morning because he's a big coffee drinker and smokes. So we had two things in common, or three if you count the ghost hunting aspect. But, uh, yeah, just a down-to-earth guy, you know, just a regular guy. Well, he's the grandfather of ghost hunting, Johnny's office. Oh, okay. From Haunted Collector. Okay. Yeah, he's the grandfather of ghost hunting. I mean, the guy is so knowledgeable. Demonologist. Demonologist, you know, the whole... And, you know, and then we've got the top exorcist has been now... Yeah. Our, one of our friends, he's uh, Bishop, Bishop in the James Catholic... Bishop James Chase, right. and he's, oh, he's... We met him personally, and again, in Kentucky. <laughs> super nice from. guy. Yeah. Super, super wonderful man. We're going to have to have him back on the show because yeah. you were in treatment when I Yeah, I missed that one. I missed that one. I wanted to be here for that because demonology is something I like to... You know, and it'd be such a total different into. interview from the, mm-hmm. the I don't know anything. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I hear I'm dr- d- running this interview and John McCoy, who is a very close friend of ours and he's one of our team members, um, runs our, our affiliate program. Yeah. And uh, he, he's, 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 he's so awed by this guy. He's not asking questions. And I'm going to run the interview. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know anything. Yeah, but like, I can talk John, to John, try to remember to ask questions when you're the interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. I mean, that's a good idea. <laughs> Thankfully, I can, I, I, you know, I talk to strangers all day. <laughs> She's pretty easy to talk to, so that's, uh, makes yeah, things like, life a lot easier for me sometimes. So where do you see uh, the events going after this one? You know we kind of covered that one already. Yeah, I know we did cover that, but that's okay. Oh, well, I, I I know what our next event's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've got we're going to actually we're going to go downtown and do a um, we're going to do a concert right downtown January uh, 29th at Fortune Nightclub. 
Um, I can tell you who's going to be headlining that event. It'll be the Beat Nuts and J. Rue the Damager from New York. They're coming in. Um, other than that, there really hasn't, I can't really tell you any more details. Other than they haven't is, got that far yet. <laughs> other than that, because yeah. you know what, this is, this is the first time that it's going to have really been announced is that, yeah, we've got that, we've got that booked. We've got that Good. solidified. Um, after that, I'm hoping for, like I said, Valentine's day. Yeah. Um, and then, um, after that sort of up in the air, it's open. There's some ideas. Have, have you gone up and, um gone to SFU Surrey to advertise this event coming up there, there's, an, there's an idea there is some stuff that comes along with um, advertising anywhere near malls yeah or campuses um, if it's not approved by the campus you can't put it up and you can't we you cannot hang flyers in any malls without the um, a permission. permission of what are they, the, the um, mall, administration. mall administration there we go yeah. well yeah. I'm just like yes. you know, my daughter is um, turning 20 next month yeah um, and so we will talk to her about this she's got because she goes to SFU but she goes up at Burnaby yep yeah we actually um, yeah it's because um, that's just such a between that and KPU yeah which is Kwantlen. Yeah. It's, there's such a large market mm -hmm. on that area. Yes. The, uh, the the key to getting into that is getting the okay from administration again. And um, this one, I just, I haven't had a, I didn't have time to go and sit down. I actually just found out last week how to do it. And you have to get a whole administration, set up a meeting and everything else. And then they'll put it, they, you can maybe get it put up in their student union buildings. But you mm. have to have it all okayed by. Yeah, because it'd be something of that, especially for a foundation. Mm -hmm. they'd, they'd be a little more willing. Yeah, yes, it's different. It's different advertising for fundraisers than it is for just a normal. Like our event in January is just a normal concert. Yeah, and it's a little bit different advertising than for a fundraiser. Fundraiser, you sort of, it's just different. Yeah, well, no, it, 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 it's a it's a apples and oranges kind yeah. of deal. You know, a concert is just you're there to make money for your pocket, whereas fundraising you're there to make money for a cause. That's yeah. right, and my and and I, and I like throwing fundraisers. I'll be honest, I I really enjoy them. I mean, I enjoy giving back, and you know, even like this one, this fundraiser here. I mean, I I was fortunate. I got to travel the world running track and field with the disabled, and somehow, some way, the the money was always there. Um, I mean, there were some car washes done and this and that, but you know what? My parents somehow always had the money. Yeah. So that I, I, and same with my sister. We played any sport we wanted. We, um, we, we were fortunate that way. So you know, it's kind of it's nice to be able to give back in this way because you know what? I was fortunate. I grew up playing sports. I know how much sports meant to me. And it's sad to see somebody that may be sitting at home on a Saturday afternoon because they can't join in yeah. that's with this one or or what or as what i see they're out out in a bus loop mm -hmm. bored out of their skull <coughs> getting in trouble because i can i can attest to the fact you know um sports keeps them out of trouble mm -hmm. they're too busy yeah yeah. yeah they're too busy my daughter was too busy she's never had a boyfriend yet and she's almost 20. <laughs> So it <laughs> kept her kept her out of trouble. Well, yeah, she she barely drinks. Yeah. Um, once in a while, she'll have a drink. Yeah. So going to a sober event doesn't bother her at all. <laughs> uh, she's into the anime stuff anyway. So. Yeah, but she's, uh, you know, she swam. She was training 16, 17 mm -hmm. hours a week. Mm -hmm. Then there's swim meets and mm -hmm. and maintaining a three point six grade average. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's. Sports can be very time consuming, I know. But you learn to manage your time, you learn to have set goals, you learn yeah. to and you don't even realize you do it. No. You just you just do. You just do. Yeah. Although she said she's taking the study course in in SFU right now and she goes, I've heard all this stuff. It's actually making sense now I'm not fifteen years old <laughs> <laughs> about exactly. setting goals and how to set them and yeah. she goes, I understand this now. <laughs> What can we say? 
So meeting uh, Corey Philpott, how was that? Well, it, it's interesting because you you know it's like you I sort of like got I got to watch him as a, a kid uh, play f- play football, yeah. And then the next thing you know, now it's like you know I can just yeah. text. I just I just pick up a phone and text him and go, hey, I want to do an event or hey, you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, you know, to have that kind of personal rapport, but he likes you too. I yeah. Mean, just meeting you on a, on a one-to-one basis. This is the first time we've ever met. Yeah. Um, and unlike a lot of our interviews where we're on the phone uh, or on Skype, we're actually one-to-one, <laughs> just like we were with Philip. Yeah. And uh, it was, um, once we got Philip to calm down, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, now we'll start the interview over now that you're not as nervous. <laughs> you just got a good giggle out of that one. But, you know, but, you know, because we're not one of those kind of interviewers that, well, you've got to pick, 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 yeah. right? I'm there to just learn about the events that you're doing mm-hmm. and where you want to go. And I mean, this hip hop event is—it's cool. It, it's it's exciting. It yeah. really is, and especially for that kind of cause. Yes, yes, and and it's really—it's been really fortunate. We've had some um, really cool sponsors come on. Um, Galactic Entertainment, where it's at, Entertainment came on. SBR Cartel Entertainment did our flyer for us and designed all that for us. Um, we've also had um, Effen, a clothing line that um, they they do all the clothing lines for uh, the um, Snack the Ripper and Mercules, and Stomp Down Killers. That's their sort of little clique group. So they've all they've all come on board, you know. It's been like um, we got get vaped, so you know it's been a united front of um, coming on and helping promote and put this together, and it's exciting, right? Yeah, um, it would be. The, the mean, more people we can we can get together to, to throw this type of, of event, the better. The more hands on deck, the better when it comes to um, fundraisers and getting the word out, obviously. And that's what's cool, right? Like, you know, I got I got emails from uh, where it's at entertainment saying, hey, you know what? Like, how can I help out? You know, they they do events um, all over um, Vancouver and that. And actually, I believe that they're the owner of it's actually on tour with a bunch of people right now across um, Alberta and BC. So you know, it's just been a united front, and that's yeah. cool. Like, you know, it's not always that. You know, in business, we're com- entertainment companies want to come together. No, in, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Usually, a lot of times you might be fighting each other, right? Yeah, and yeah. but you know, it's I kind of I kind of believe in the idea of um, building relationships. I, yeah, I, I, I want to build relationships. I'm more interested in building re- relationships with people, um, and and solid relationships that you know last that aren't just like you know a fly-by-night like yes you know? yes yeah that's sort of you know that's sort of like where where i see i see my comp the company that we're, we're forming and i like to say we because i believe in building a team yeah. um i don't believe that anything happens by myself <laughs> oh god no <laughs> Something happened. Well, I'm the king of the world. Uh, not really. No, no. This is this is all about this is all about a team. This yeah. is all about you know. It has certain goals and what and where do we want to go and exactly. Like, and like you said, you, you you know you're doing this, but you don't want to also take and and backstab or step on somebody else's because the more toes you step on, mm-hmm. the faster you drop if something happens. A- absolutely, and you know you, you build these relationships and and you build a team and the team around you builds builds you up and and I believe that you know a strong team will succeed trying to do it by yourself you will fail yes. that's my that's my own opinion <laughs> well because you know like as you say with a team you come out at it this end your team mm. member comes out at it this end the other team member comes out at it this end yeah and you congeal together mm-hmm. and now the event because if you're just doing it by yourself you only have this vision. It's mm-hmm. very narrow. Yeah. And you have four or five team members that work it just as hard as you, and your your vision now becomes yeah. a lot larger. Absolutely. And a lot more. It was the same with what we did last year with organizing Western Canada Paracon and Spiritual Expo. 
uh, we have paranormal. Paranormal. We changed it to paranormal, paranormal because no we don't understand why a paracon is up here. I would have been like, what? <laughs> now, so it's paranormal paracon is like paranormal convention. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now see that makes sense. But it's like a comic con and yeah, and, and all that kind of stuff. But we actually had to change it because that was one of the things that we learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yes. It, it's big business down in the states. That everyone it's knows what the paracon business. is down there. Yeah. But as soon as you get over the border, people are like scratching their head. Or <laughs> what is the paracon? Because you know, it, it's a, it's a, you know, we're trying to make it a large event. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> and if we didn't have the team, mm-hmm. and each one has a specific so duties, yeah. and um, you know, there's a business that's also involved mm-hmm. as well. Um, our friends opened up the business. They have uh, Beyond Belief. Yeah which is a uh, metaphysical store and they do psychic readings and everything like that so the spiritual expo hello everything spiritual so first yeah. nations are they not spiritual hello yeah. Yeah. <laughs> plus we've got guys coming in who are experts in uh, ufology right like uh, chris rutkowski yeah who's on, on close encounters yep he'll yeah. be here yeah um who's a personal friend of ours and his wife don is i love her <laughs> And we got uh, Dr. John Bindenagel. I well, we haven't we'll asked to speak to him yet because I could not get a hold of that man. I'll get a hold of him. <laughs> He's a wildlife biologist from the island. Oh, uh, okay. Study Sasquatch. So, just you know, like he's a top mm-hmm. in Canada, in, in almost in the in North America. Yeah, so. but he's an older gentleman, and he's in his seventies, I think. Yeah, sixties, seventies. Seventies. He's got several books out. Well, he's got a book coming out too. Yeah, that's uh due beginning of the year. I'm just got to sit down and finish it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Corvus is going to get on your case for that real quick. Yeah, 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 I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a publisher, right? Oh, uh, that's Dark, perfect. Dark Moon Productions is our, yeah, so our publisher. So he, He's kind of tough on me when I start a slack off. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fair enough. I need that little push. I seem to do better under pressure, though. I don't know what the deal is with Yeah, that. you and your last minute thing. <laughs> yeah. Get a lot done on those last couple of days. Oh, oh, yes, absolutely. That's one of my defects of character, procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that one before? Um, yes, mine, mine's called worry work. <laughs> uh, future surfer. Future surfer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah. Well, he, he's, you know, when he was in treatment center, he would go, start this and this and this. And I'm going, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm learning. And, and uh, you know, the future surfing, the worry work. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that the the apple doesn't fall from the tree on that one either. Well, I'm learning. I'm I've, I'm learning that you know, got got to slow down and um, and and really plan the, these events in stages and really set out so that you don't have to worry. Yeah. Um, you don't just do them by the seat of your pants. If you sit down and you do. Oh a, God. If you sit down. <laughs> I, I find from 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 throwing a lot of events that, and especially now that I've branched out from so, from sober events, mm-hmm. the the more detail that we put that I put down and that before I even take it to my team, um, so that I can show them my idea because obviously I take it to the team before I do do anything and. Um, the more detail that you have and the more detail that I'm able to explain to them, yeah. the better that they, they understand the event and the better that we can we can break it down and say, okay, this needs to be done now, then this needs to be done. This can't be done until this can be done. And, like, you know, you, you can't announce an event without the contract signed for an artist. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that last yeah, yeah. We know that. That's why we haven't done as many promotions. Yeah. I mean, we're just coming soon mm-hmm. because we haven't actually sat down because you have to have the funds to sign the mm-hmm. contracts. Yeah, yeah, because you know you're dealing with agents, you're dealing with stars. You have to, and then then you have to go to the next step once you get the funds and procure your your stars. Then, then of the course flights. you got to get your flights. Mm-hmm. But you've also got to pay the hotels. Yeah, yeah. You see, um, I've been fortunate this time. Um, the um, booking agent that I used, he's been really good and helped me with all that. He took care of the flights. 
He's taking care of the hotel rooms for Onyx when they come in. That's nice. And I haven't had to worry about about that, and I'm really, really thankful for that because... Uh, the booking agents that I've actually worked with, the talent agents, um, they have been very good. They've, mm -hmm. they've treated me very, very well. You know, considering I was a deer in the headlights, because mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, deal. Mm -hmm. especially Emma, Emmy, I mean, from Onyx Moon um, Entertainment. Oh, yeah, she's production. Great. She just... She held my hand patient. on more. <laughs> very patient woman. <laughs> very patient woman with me, and I, I couldn't ask for. I mean, I can understand why Keith Keith Age from mm -hmm. Spook TV. I mean, I can really understand why he works with her because she just. I mean, Mark Tetlow was very good too, but yeah, it was great. But Emmy just well, we, got, we her husband asked her to stop using the cell phone when talking to me. <laughs> Because we would end up talking about everything else as well, right? Mm -hmm. And an hour and a half later, we're still on the phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And all I needed was the form to sign for the particular <laughs> yeah. guest. It's an hour and a half to get that form. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, but that's what you said earlier, was you're forming relationships. Yeah. That's... that's it's, the, it's the key. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I believe for a successful mm -hmm. business... Um, that it's built on relationship. Yeah. Um, you know, and I I believe that to to my core because if you don't have relationships with people, like if you don't, if you're if you're not getting along with somebody, and then you have to phone them up and say, I know that you um, look after this uh, particular artist, um, and you're not really kind of you know something's happened you don't have had that relationship built you know it's not maybe not gonna go as as smooth you know yeah you know it's about it's about per perception as well you know like for me for me my my goal is is to my dream is to have a, a company that people see and want to be a part of because we're having fun we're doing fun stuff we're doing concerts and fundraisers and corporate events but people see us having fun while we're doing it while it's happening and so on yeah that's with that being said we're quickly going to go to a commercial <laughs> break before my wife uh, starts jabbing more <laughs> and we'll be back with Meg Zahn right after these messages stay tuned <laughs> I am living on channel Z. You're listening to Z Talk Radio Network. I am living on Channel Z. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. In the Car Nose Picker. Mr. In the Car Nose Picker. For you, the daily commute isn't simply a drive to the office. It's a hands-on exploration deep into your schnoz. I'm going in now. With pinpoint accuracy and sheer determination, you dig for boogers like miners dig for gold. I hit the jackpot. And why do you do it? Because the windows are up and you think we can't see you. We can. How you doing? So crack open a nice cold Bud Light, oh nabber of the nose nugget. We'd like to shake your hand, but you'll have to wash it first. Mr. In the Car Nose Picker. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. The competition has taken notice. Oh, my God. Good luck keeping up with us. <laughs> you're listening to Z-Talk Radio Network. Hi, I'm Ben Hansen, and you're listening to Canadian X-Talk Radio on the ztalkradio.com network. <laughs> If this station isn't your cup of coffee, then drink tea. 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 Drink tea. Ooh. Drink tea. Drink tea. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now we're talking. 100% news. 100% uh. information. Yeah. 100% guaranteed. Loving this. Thought you might say that. You're listening to Z-Talk Radio Network. Okay, welcome back to Canadian X Talk Radio. Uh, just before the break, 
And still with us right now is uh, Michael Zorn from uh, Dance Entertain Promotions in Vancouver. Welcome back, guys. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, well, we had to tell uh, Mike to put his hands in his pockets because every time he moves his hands across the table, <laughs> it was picked up on the mic. So he's kind of at a loss for where to put his hands right now. <laughs> Well, you know what happens when you've got a passionate person and, and they speak with their hands and suddenly they're going, oh my goodness. And now if you could keep your hands up here and, and up in your face, you're, you're okay, right? I'll just uh, One keep of those things. the table. <laughs> so, so we're actually discussing uh, organizing events, uh, expensive as they may be, and generally there's not much of a comeback as far as uh, any profit margin on any event we've done. Uh, same with us, actually. We haven't really made a lot at any of our events. No, no. The, the ones that we've been in privy to, um, it doesn't seem to be a lot of profit margin. And, I, and you know, we're not getting into this event that we're pulling for profit. Yeah. No. All, we, what, what, all, all my goal is, really, is just to break even. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking a paranormal convention with spiritual. Um, yeah, that's... You could make a lot of money, mm-hmm. but you have to have a name behind you. That's, you know, sometimes when you're doing conventions and fundraisers and that, sometimes the best thing that can happen is the w- word of the organization getting out. Yeah. Making the awareness, because you know what? People become aware of the, what that what that organization is. And now that now they see it, and the next time they go, "Hey, I remember that." Yeah. And and sometimes that's where you have to start. I mean, especially like if you when you're doing smaller scale stuff, like if you, when you do big scale stuff, when you do stuff for like cancer foundations and all that sort of thing, they've already got a name behind them. People know what what they are. When you got something that's smaller, it's kind of like. Sometimes the best thing to do is get the name out, and yeah. that's just from my own my <laughs> own experience. And this, is, for me, this is kind of the the great advice because you're doing this. You've been putting on these sober events, SBR events, for many years now, mm-hmm. and you're gotten very good at it. That you're now deciding to branch out into yeah. more mainstream events, mm-hmm. which is your first one coming up on the. That's that's right. Um, and I mean, I, I can imagine you're probably chewing your nails. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> but you're, you're doing it also because Corey Philpot has really supported you in the past for Absolutely. the SBR events. So your first one, you give back to him. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I mean, one of the guys that's on my team, that's on the team, um, we've, we've discussed the, the, the possibility of... Um, always giving back to, at some sort of level as we as we go through through the events um, which would be which would be nice um, yeah I mean ultimately you know you have to make money to continue going on yes that being said you know I've been very fortunate all my life and um, if I can help somebody out then I want to be able to do that and um, you know, it's like it, it's it's really cool to be able to help people out. It's also really cool to be able to throw really cool events. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. That's true. Yeah. I mean, you 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 know, the word of mouth is huge. Absolutely, it is. And to get this out, like you said, your your Facebook advertising, um, that kind of advertising, but word of mouth is huge. Mm-hmm. It and, is. And, and There's also crowdfunding as well if you wanted to really get into it. And, and that's what we're, we're going to do that one yes. on Tuesday. We're getting a video. We're going to start the crowdfunding. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, uh, it's actually funny. One of our uh, Georgina, our uh, when she said to me, she goes, because I applied for a grant because we're a mm-hmm. society, nonprofit society, and I talked to the lady. Of course, I don't know how to talk. That's why I'm his co-host. That's right. Um, <laughs> She's all talking. I just sit here and nod politely. <laughs> but she she told me about crowdfunding, and I didn't have a clue. I, yeah. I had never heard of it before. Yeah, it's um, word of mouth is is absolutely the biggest um, face to face personal talk to people is the biggest thing. You know, it's like you can do. You, 
I mean, Facebook and all those other things, you know, it, it's something that people see. Yeah, social when media in general. Social media is things that people see. But when you actually sit down with somebody and explain the event and explain the idea, you know, now they understand it. Now they've become involved to a certain level. They're not maybe a part of the event, but they've come involved with the event because they've taken the time to listen and you've explained it to them and they're they're invested they're invested in the event yeah 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 it, they understand the event and and i think that um absolutely you know it's 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 very imperative to do you know that face to face again comes back to relationships what we were talking about but it's also that face to face so like when you know we met like we just met first time tonight mhm mm um i know you've talked to glenn yeah. Yeah. Um, prior to this, but you've never you've never seen hide or hair or talk to me. <laughs> You're going okay. There's I another person after my own heart that can talk like I can. Well, Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I was just sit back in the corner. He has snooze. <laughs> Let me know when you need me. I always need you, baby. <laughs> so, uh, where do you see this? Uh, P promotions company going over the next couple of years over the next couple of years like I um, said earlier I mean one of the things that I'm hoping to be able to do is in time branch out from Vancouver to different areas in the in BC possibly Alberta maybe yeah. um, I would I would really like to be able to to um, book concerts and put them in multiple cities yeah um, my home base will stay in Vancouver. Um, I might have sat. I mean, my dream would be to have satellite um, Office. offices in, in other places. But this would be the home. This would be home base. Um, Vancouver, Surrey, Delta, somewhere yeah. would be home base. Um, but I'd really like to also get into doing, like I said, fundraisers, corporate events, um, event planning, event coordination, event management all that sort of stuff over the course of time I mean right now the um, the big thing is the concerts um, you have to start somewhere yeah <laughs> well you have to build a name up somewhere that's that's right and in and you have that name also has to be built up that you're the people are willing like working with you like you yeah, said building that relationship building the relationship and that's that's the that's there again the key relationship you know and and, and it is people see that what you can do then they're going to come and talk to you, and and get, and hopefully give give you opportunities. That's yeah. that's yeah. that makes a lot of sense. It, it just makes perfect sense. You know, I've, some of it's going out and doing some legwork and talking to people, like you know, like hey, you over know, what? And over, over and over and over, over and you know, over. it's like hey, you know what, you're doing this, you're, you're you're putting on this event. Hey, maybe you want us to come in and be the event manager for it. We we won't do anything but a man manage the day of the, the event where one of my team members would come in and they would just manage the day they would just run the day for you so that whoever the head organizer is can sort of you know take some of that stress off of them yeah mm -hmm. that's you know that's stuff that but i like high blood pressure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> i like high blood pressure that's why she's on medication <laughs> It can't be the fact that my age is this factor. <laughs> no, you're not that old. No, I'm not. Yeah, well, yeah you are. Yeah, so suck it up, baby. Right. And the, the other big, the other big thing is, I'm I'm really interested in quality over quantity. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Uh, that's for me, and um, I mean, we're going to start to put together a bunch of stuff over the next few weeks. Um, because this is the first event we've learned a lot because <laughs> this is a little bit different from anything I've ever done before um, I mean I threw a pub night um, for 14 years ago or something like that and um, a pub night compared to um, bringing yeah, you is <laughs> Are you, were you talking uh, raisin to <laughs> big grape <laughs> big honking grapes <laughs> the whole pile of bushels yes yes it's um they're, they're they're not even comparable, and I've I've thrown a, a one sober concert. I did that um, in September. So I mean, we I have done a little bit, but 
Well, that wasn't a very that you know there were, that was a limited seating, wasn't it? A, a limited venue that 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 one. Well, that was a sober event. That was for um, that was for recovery day. Yeah, and that was for mo- with Mocha only, and we had well over two hundred people there, and we had two we had two artists um, we had there, and you know it was it was really a cool event. Yeah, and um, learned a lot at that one too. Well, you're always constantly learning. Absolutely. Because you can always get better. You learn from those mistakes that you've mm-hmm. done to go forward to not making those same mistakes again. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know. Refining. Refining. You know, we kind of made that mistake last year. We had about 18 people on the guest list, and some of them were uh, in England. And by the time you count everything up, it's like, holy crap, and no, no, no way we can yeah. afford it. Well, you know, when you, when. For me, one of the things that I do, the first things that I do when I do these events is the budget. And I've done that. Yeah. That's got to be, the, that's got to be absolutely yeah, the priority. first. Priority. You know, and and it, it's not, it's a generalized budget. Yeah. Uh, because you obviously cannot nickel and, you know, when you're, you're looking at everything. Um, exchange rates, especially when we're paying for stars from the states. States, mm-hmm. you know, you, your exchange rates have to be factored in, you know, and these are things that... Mm-hmm. When I did the budget a month and a half ago, yeah, the exchange rates were different. Yeah, so you're gonna be continually on top of that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and you know, from my my experience doing these, I mean, they're a lot of fun to do. They're yeah. a lot of work. They're a lot of fun to do. Um, I really enjoy them, and that's why I, that's why I continue to do them. And I I hope to do this. I hope that this is the t- this business. My goal with this business is that, you know, this will be my full-time job within well, a very, very short period of time. time. Yeah. Um, I, I have another job that I do as well. Um, though this is this is what this is my dream. This is would is to That's own and operate this, and this be my soul. You just love high stress situations, right? <laughs> <laughs> but this would this is. This is what I want to do, and um, I have no other. I have lots of other aspirations. Yeah, I, but this. But is you're young still. You know, you're in your what? Late thirties, early forties. Late thirties. I'll be um, what? Thirty-seven. Um, next week, the thirteenth. Well, <laughs> still thirteen years younger than us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Considering, well, you're not. You, you're not where I am yet. <laughs> 50 years old. <sighs> yeah, you get people asking me, like, what kind of a madman would organize an event of that size at age 50? I'm like, well, not if you have a passion for it and you're willing to sit down and organize it correctly, then it's going to be a good event. And why why, why do I have to have a, an age restriction? Exactly. Well, you know, um, maybe I'm a little more mature, uh, so maybe I see things a little differently instead of party yeah we don't party you know at 25 yeah i mean i wouldn't have been able to even 35 you know i was bringing up my kid at that time Mm -hmm. where's my focus yeah yeah and uh well your your goals change and that's why i really like the idea of having a a nice balance yeah um because i i I like diversity. I don't want to get stuck with just like hip hop or just country or just rock or just sober or just non sober. I want to be have diversity. Yeah. I want to be able to. I want my. I want the team. It's about the team. It's mm-hmm. not about me. I want the team to be able to. You know what? Accommodate anything that comes up, comes about to us. Like you know, if somebody comes to us and says, "Hey, you know what?" I, I, I want to do a sober dance. Bang. We can do it. Somebody comes to us and says, hey, you know what? I really want to I want to put this benefit concert on. Okay, yeah, we can do that. We can work with you and do that. So that, you know, we're not one-dimensional. Yeah. Well, you, you, you have a... If you're one-dimensional, especially in that kind of industry, yeah. I would imagine you get very limited. Mm-hmm. And if, you if you know, the, the, uh, the spectrum is not... It's very very straight line whereas if you're diversified mm-hmm. you'll you'll get more events of different natures and each time you do it you get better at it uh, yeah and speaking of team members you were supposed to have one here today but <laughs> i changed the time on you 
<laughs> so tell me about her. Nova, she's, um, I, I met her about a year ago. Actually, I met her in February. I met her at an event that we were doing, and um, we just started talking at the event, and uh, she was actually working at the um, location that we were holding the event, and we just sort of started talking, and one thing led to another, and she's come on board um, to do a lot of work. Like, she's she does a lot of work. There's other team members. There's at least five or six more there's six more team members um but she's she came on um back in february when we were doing sober events and she's she's stuck around and um she's gonna be she'll be at the um the fundraiser but she's uh, she's been absolutely amazing like if if somebody would have told me that throwing an event at a venue yeah and then developing a relationship, friendship, business aspect, all bu- business. Um, I mean, I would have been blown away if, if somebody would have asked me that, you know? It's yeah. But, but the universe had, you know... It, the, the, they the, aligned. It, yeah, it was aligned. You were fated to mm-hmm. do that. I mean, when everything that's gone on in our lives in the last six or seven months and... You know, maybe things were meant to happen at this time mm-hmm. to open that next door. Exactly, it, 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 absolutely. And you know, I mean, there's her. There's I've got there's Mickey that's a part of my team, and yeah. uh, John and Jake and so many others. You know, and I, Nelson and I. You know, I could go on, and, and yeah. they're all a part of my team. And I, you know, I, I they they all play a very um, particular role in it i mean nat's part of my my team right now as well and it's kind of like they all they all do their they all have certain roles that they do and they do them well and it makes my job easy and if it wasn't for them this wouldn't be happening you know yeah it just just wouldn't be And, and you know what it's them that it's them in reality that make it happen I mean, I'm the guy that just sort of goes around and goes, I need you to do this for me, please. I need you to do that. It's like, you know, I phone up want, like Nova and say, you know what, hey, I need help in this area, this area, in this area. And she comes back to me with that information. I phone up Mickey, same thing. John, Jake, you know, all of all of them. Now, Nelly, you know, they, they all, you know. Well, it sounds like what Nova is basically is your partner. Well... Yes, uh, I mean, sh- partner, not, yeah. You're not quite there yet, yeah. Ian, but, you know, th- that... There's some, yeah, I mean, there's some business there, absolutely, that we do a lot of work together. We're actually, I'm going to be joining her in doing a big fundraiser in, yeah. um, when is it, April. We're going to join, mm. we're going to join forces and I'm going to help her it's, the roles are going to reverse, yep. and we're going to do um, a, an event, um, c- candles for Christina. Um, it's going to—it's for a child that's had cancer and it's not doing very well, and we're going to do that. At, I believe. Don't quote me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, at Status Nightclub, and I believe that that's going to be done the the Thursday night before the f- Good Friday. Okay. Um, and you know that's going to go to help the help the family, and um, because you know there's a lot of a, when a child when you have a sick child yeah a lot of things get neglected absolutely absolutely because and, and your focus is all on that child yeah and yeah. that's that's what every every parent's nightmare mm-hmm. but every parent's priority yeah and it's it, and it's and it's really cool to be given that opportunity to to help her do that. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, I got a whole team and I, I could, I could spend a half an hour mentioning the people that, that have helped build this and make this happen. You know what? Like from like, like Corey to my parents to, you know, like I had my dad out helping me hang flyers for this concert, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, you know, so, so, so it is, it's a full, it's a full team effort and, you know, like. I, I've had people call me out of the blue, like I said, and just say, hey, how can I help do this? How can I help you make this happen? 
Yeah. And you know what? They've 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 done amazing things for me, and you know what? They haven't asked for anything, and because it's a, and I'm gonna at some point make sure that they're all. Um, you, you'll give back to them. Give somewhere. back to them somehow. somehow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you for putting putting those words because <laughs> it's not a monetary thing. It's something that is giving back to them in yes. other ways that mean something to them. Absolutely, because you know what? There again, that's that relationship. That's how this is. That's how this is done, and 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 I believe that this is how this world goes along around. Yep. It's about relationship. It's about you know people phoning me up. Like I mean, I work for for a towing company. That's the other job that I do. And yeah. people phone me up. Hey, you know what? Hey, my car's broken down. Can you help me out? Yeah, no problem. So you know, I, I get them. You know, but it's relationship. And yeah. Well, you're you you know um, as Glenn and I are really attest to, is you're meant to meet the people in your life when you're ready to meet those people uh, in your life. Absolutely. That's like uh, how we got introduced to you was through uh, Philip. Uh, Philippe Cartel from SBR Cartel. He says, "Oh, you got to speak to uh, Mike Zorn because he's got some good stuff going on." I'm like, "Okay." So he, he was on the radio a few months back, and now I got yeah. you on the radio. So there we go. And how did we meet Philip Cartel? Yeah, through, through James, James Hammond. Because <laughs> you were you and James got yeah. along yeah. really well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And became good friends. Yeah, and and you know that's 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 the that's the relationship, and it's and it, and it continues to grow. Yeah. And, and, and your circle it, continues to, to grow. grow, right? And the more positive and the the mm. more right attitude you have, that's the type of people that you start attracting. Absolutely. And uh, it's like uh, I was talking to one of our, our my fellow drivers today, and I was talking to Wes. And I said, "You know what? I could be bitter right now." Mm -hmm. I said, "But it's a wasted emotion." Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a wasted emotion. Let's just. Mm -hmm. This door, that door window was meant to close, and this door was meant to open. Yep. And whatever happens at now, happens. Exactly. Yep. And things will work out the way they were meant to work out. And, and that, and that's the thing. And and at the end of the day, um, they 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 will. Yeah. They're, they're 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 meant to be exactly the way they're meant to be, and that's the, that's the cool thing about all this. Yeah, because I, I guess, you know, it was not meant for us to put the convention on this year, in mm -hmm. 2014. No. We weren't ready, obviously. Yeah. It was a testing ground, I think. Yeah, a testing ground, a learning ground. Yeah. yeah. And next year, we will. So, you know, at what maybe what, you know, in our relationship, how can we offer to help you? Well, maybe, you know, helping with promotions in the radio. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we give you our website for people to go on and listen to this radio show and you guys you, he'll do up a poster tonight yep. and he'll send it to you yep. and you can send it out and what he'll have on the poster is our web address because yep. obviously this is internet radio yep. and uh, and go time, both time. Uh, PST and EST See? Yep. Nice. and um, he'll do you have a picture of him you will take a picture. Yeah, I need a picture. Again. Yeah, we'll get that. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, not, that, not that we don't have camera equipment. Everywhere. <laughs> As I, I sort of laughed when he asked for a picture. I'm like, well, he could, he could potentially just save one off of, yeah. <laughs> off of Facebook. Well, yeah. and we could have, but you know, when, you, when we brought you down here and we said, you know, because obviously we're selling our house and and uh, my basement has never been so flippin' tidy. <laughs> And organize, and we and we go. Oh, that's our camera equipment. Don't touch it; it'll fall over because it's all stacked <laughs> underneath the stairs, right? Precariously. Precari. Wow. Well, yeah. Hey, I did a good job. I said no there one's gonna look go. underneath the stairs. <laughs> Except for me. <laughs> Except for me. And if you do, oh well. <laughs> so anyway, guys, we're running out of time. Uh, would you like to go over the event one more time, there, please, Mike? Just so people know where it's at, where what time it starts, and how much the game. Um, it's hip hop for all star youth sports. It's going to happen uh, November 22nd. Doors open at 7. Tickets in advance are $25. They're going to be more at the door. I'm not letting on how much they're going to be at the door. Um, so I suggest get them in advance. Um, we're going to have Onyx there headlining with uh, Mercules, Snack the Ripper, Jacqueline G, uh, Lucid Afterlife, uh, Juvie Dizzle, uh, B. Mendez, Giuliano, uh, my mind's going blank. <laughs> and lots of other very, very good, very, 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 very talented, very, very talented. It's local, it, local, 
local yes it's a local it's going to wants to support the local hip hop as well um, it's and like I said all the uh, proceeds are going to go to all star youth sports to help the children so that they can play sports and that is Corey Philpott's uh, foundation foundation yes, yes it is and again who Corey Philpott is he's a former running back 1994 Before. BC Lions yeah correct Great Cup champion. Great champion. Quick six. Quick six. <laughs> Quick six. And, and what and one I've heard, uh, you know, over and over again, uh, just an all-round nice man. Super nice yeah, guy. Uh, he, he, yeah, yeah. I mean. Wants to give back to the community and everything like that. Yeah, so. like t super, super positive. Always been very, very supportive of any kind of event I've wanted to do in, in his club that's called Club Six. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> enough. Not surprisingly <laughs> enough, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So thanks for coming on the show tonight, Mike. Thank you. And uh, on behalf of myself and my wife, wish you all a good night. Uh, up next is uh, Jim, Dr. Dim Fitzsimmons, and Dimland Radio. Stay tuned.